What's up YouTube, Kelvin here. In today's video, we're going to look at upgrading a physical ASA 5506X with Firepower Services. Now, just before I get into the actual demonstration, I just want to point out for those that might not know, um, at Cisco we have a lot of guides online that can actually guide you through the process of upgrading and doing you know various other things with with devices so it's worth checking out Cisco Docs um, and planning your upgrade so I just want to quickly show you through this so once you navigate to the Cisco Docs for the ASA 5506X with Firepower Services there's a ton of links here that you can click um, depending on what you're trying to achieve but for us we need to click on Cisco ASA upgrade guide and then I recommend anybody that's doing this on a production network and have not done this before I recommend you um, start by clicking on planning your upgrade I think it's a very good place to start and it guides you through the things that you need to check so it's got a very good checklist here guides you through a checklist um, and it contains everything from upgrading um, ASA, upgrading ASDM and also upgrading the firepower module on the uh, on the ASA. And once you've done that you simply click, click on the upgrade guide which will then bring you to the um, the upgrade page or the upgrade section for the particular device and for me in our case we're going to upgrade a standalone unit today and we're going to do that via the CLI but there's a ton of other options here you know you might have an active standby um, HA pair you might have an active active or you might even have a cluster um, so there's, there's the upgrade steps um, listed so for instance if we click on upgrade the standalone unit it's got the steps here um, which aren't too bad they're pretty straightforward but like with everything there's guides um, and for some people it's better that they see a video of the upgrade process or video of the, uh, any process when it comes to technology so that's the reason why I'm doing um, this video vid video today so as I said I've got a physical ASA 55 or 6 X in front of me now um, and we're gonna start by upgrading that. I actually don't know what version it's on so we're going to check that and we're going to upgrade. Obviously before you look at upgrading your device you need to make sure that you've downloaded the right software uh, version and image um, for the device. Um, so in my case I've, I've, I've got my images already so you do need valid credentials um, to access Cisco, uh, software.cisco.com um, and then you'll be able to download the um, the relevant images. So let's get straight in now. So let's start by jumping on this um, ASA. And just click no. I'm just going to quickly have a look at the settings that are configured on here. So um, I'm just going to start by actually taking that off the IP address. Just do no IP address, and let's also do a show version. So we can see that we're running the ASA software version 9.6. So there, I think I've downloaded. Let me just check. I think it's 9.8. I've got. Um, yeah, it's 9.8 free, which we're going to be upgrading today. Um, and we've also got the ASDM um, newer image as well, which I'll need to check which version that is as well. So that's what we're going to be upgrading to today. So we need to set the management interface in my case, which I'm connected to. And I'm just going to, for simplicity, I'm going to set this to DHCP to get address. No shutdown. And it won't get an IP address until you, um, on the ASA, you need to give a name to the interface before, um, if you're requesting DHCP services, um, before it gets an IP address. So just to prove that, we could just do a um, show IP address. And we can see that the management interface doesn't have an IP address assigned. So if we do name if, and we'll just call it MGMT. Um, we should now 
start to go through the DHCP process and get a DHCP address. So we'll just do shy IP address. As you can see there now, we have been given an IP address. So we should be good to go now. Um, so as I say, we've Cisco has the guides online that you can follow through if um, you know this video is a little bit too quick or you want to go back and have a look at something. Um, but hopefully this should be straightforward. So I have a beautiful little TFTP server that's currently running um, on, on the network where I'm going to be pulling the images from which are stored on this system. So there is other uh, there is other procedures that you can use, IEFTP, um, HTTP, um, and uh, SCP, etc. Um, so it's, it's totally up to you, in a sense, what you use. So for me, I'm going to use TFTP. So we need to start off with, um, so I've actually put it up here, but let me just paste this in real quick so it makes, and I'll explain it so it makes sense to you guys. So we need to, this is basically saying that we're going to be using TFTP to copy the image from the TFTP server, which is located at 192.168.1.10. The image that it's looking for is the ASA983-LFBFF-K8.SPA. So this is the actual image name. Um, do type that out as it's actually um, as, as the image name is or it won't find it and then once we've once the um, ASA has found that image we're then going to copy to disk zero and we're going to name it the exact same as it's called and that's all it's doing so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and start this and it's worth pointing out when you go through this. So we just need to confirm the settings. Um, so you just press enter if you're happy with that. The source file name, just have a look at that and confirm that. Make sure you're happy with that. And then the destination file name is what we're going to keep the name as. It's going to be the same. So we'll go ahead and press enter. And we should see on the TFTP server over here that it's going to pull the image. So we can see that there's activity going on now and it's getting the image as you can see on the ASA. Now it might be worth pointing out that uh, you need to allow this on your host firewall or else it's no doubt going to block the uh, connection. So in my case, just for simplicity for this video, what I've done, um, if I've got it up, I've just basically disabled the host uh, firewall settings um, it's just so we don't run into that issue. So it's worth just pointing that out. And now, as you can see, it's pulling that image. It doesn't take too long. And then once that's gone, uh, once that's been um, imported to the device, what we'll do is we'll copy the ASDM image um, to, to the flash as well. So let me just quickly find out which ASDM image I have. Um... just find out so the ASDM image that I currently have is uh, 7.9 so that's the image that we'll be using as well so I'll just pause this video uh, while the image is up load into the flash and then we'll continue okay so now the um, image has been uploaded to flash of the ASA and what it's done is it's computed the ash um, and compared it everything's been validated so we're good on that sense so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same but we're going to do it for the uh, ASDM image so what I'll do just so I don't make a mistake is I'll copy the image name and I'll paste that in here so there we go for ASDM and the same again so it's exactly the same process 
we're just changing the image name this time around. So again, we'll copy that to this device by confirming these settings. And it'll go away, connect to the TFTP server and start uploading that image to the flash on the ASA. Okay, now that the ASDM image has been um, uploaded as well, we are good to go. We could continue now. So, what I've noticed, in fact, I've done an upgrade before on the 55 or 6X, and um, if we just look at this guide, we can see that. So, up to step four, we're pretty much there anyway now from what we've done. But then if you look at this where it says show running config boot system, what it's supposed to do is it outputs the um, the boot images um, that are available on, on the uh, on the disk. But if we do that, boot system, yeah, again I can't, I can't see that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let me just do a show disk zero so we could do so we could see now if we just do a show disk zero which is where the images are we can see that the old ASDM is here so it's 7.6 uh, and we also have uh, the ASA image 9.6 here so what this guide says is that um, the SA uses the images in the order listed first. So it's going top down um, pretty much. So what we need to do now is we we need to change the, um, we need to basically take these out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to go ahead now and do that and continue. So we do that by doing a no, no boot system, disk zero, and we have a look, and we have the old image here. So we'll go ahead and copy that, and then we'll enter on that one, and we're also gonna we need to as the guide says as well we need to do the um, same well pretty much the same for the ASDM but not using the same command so it's literally ASDM image disk zero in my case and if we have a look we have the old ASD, ASDM image here and again we'll copy that and that's done so what we need to do now is we need to set the new boot image. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do boot system disk zero. And what we need to do now is find the new image. So it's here, 9.8. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy that and that's going to boot next time round and oops with the last command with the ESDM actually that's um, that's incorrect we didn't need to do that um, because basically what happens is um, once we specify the new ASDM image it's going to boot from the newer one um, so we don't need to like do a no um, ASDM image etc so this command again we'll just put this in but we need to specify the new image that's my mistake there jumping ahead um so this is in my case this is my new image 7.9 uh, so that should boot next so what we do now is we do a write mem and we issue a reload and this should now boot into um the new upgraded image of 9.8 in our case and we'll do some verification checks for the ASA as well as ASDM to make sure that the upgrade has been successful.
Okay, so now that the ASA is rebooted, we should be able to, in fact, it's, it shows you the actual version up here now anyway, and it does also when it's booting. But we could just verify the version by doing a show version. And we can see now that we're using version 9.8 free and our device manager which is ASDM is 7.9 so we can see that the upgrade has been successful we can also confirm the ASDM via the HTTPS by actually going to the management IP address trying to access ASDM uh, what was it, it was uh, 1.31 I think it was I just want to check that show HTTP yep so that's not going to work so give me a second I'll just quickly do this and now it should work there we go so let me just proceed and we can see there as well that we're using 7.9.2. For me, I already have ASDM installed, so ASDM should now open up no problems. I have seen an issue in the past uh, where I've hit a bug, where as soon as you log in, you're presented with a, um, a problem that basically shuts down ASDM it says it can't get configurations from the device but we'll see if it happens with with this one uh, I can't remember the password was let me just do username I'll do username test password test just for the sake of this video, I'm going to just verify that. My lord, and hopefully, I don't hit the bug. But we'll see. So, SDM opens, and you can see tabs there. You got the ASA firepower status, firewall dashboard, etc. Uh, I might be hitting this bug. Let's see. Mm, um, am I? What it does is it tries to get a configuration from the ESA. And if it fails, we'll be presented with the error at the minute. In a minute. <coughs> but rest assured, the SDM version is compatible with the uh, version of ASA code that I'm running. That's also one thing that you need to check if you're upgrading um, your ASA and you're upgrading ASDM. Make sure that ASDM is compatible with um, the ASA image. Uh, it looks like this might be working. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, I mean, the 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 whole purpose of this video was to um, demonstrate that the ASA uh, the ASA upgrade process. So that's pretty much it. As you can tell, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but sometimes it makes sense just to give you a video so you guys can kind of follow along and put the document into perspective a little bit more so i hope those that are upgrading have found this video useful please uh, like subscribe and if you've got any questions please feel free to comment and i'll do my best to answer um but yep thank you for watching